Hi guys, it's Ben from Heirloom Pianos. Um, so good news, there is another project fully completed and uh, ready to be returned to a hopefully very happy customer. Um, now this piano is a Carl Weber upright. Um, I can't actually find a huge amount of information about the manufacturer. Um, likely it was just a stencil piano. Um, it has a little mark here indicating that um, it was first sold by Palings, who are a very large manufacturer or retailer of instruments in Australia. Um, and it's a standard under damper assembly mechanism. And we've done a lot of work in terms of restoration to it. Um, so let's dive in and have a quick look and we'll show you the full details and nature of the restoration and then have a little demonstration at the end. All right, so by the magic of television, we have transformed the piano and removed the panels and the action mechanism. Um, so I was contacted by the customer because a previous tuner had tried to tune the piano and deemed it untunable. And the main reason for that was that there were a number of loose tuning pins. So first thing that we've done with the piano is completely restring it. Um, looking at the before and after pictures, you'll also see that there was a um, steel plate um, over the pin block. And what we've done with that is actually removed the plate and basically just shown as a lovely piece of uh, timber here. So we've basically just sort of displayed that um, and like I say, hopefully the customer will appreciate that. Um, also with the instrument, there were a number of uh, cracks in the soundboard. So these have been shimmed. Uh, there's an additional one there. And that was actually a crack that went through a screw hole. So we've just done as much as we can there as well. Um, there's an additional crack here. Um, another crack that goes through that little number there. And then down towards the bottom, there was an absolutely ginormous um, crack in the soundboard that we had to use an extra large shim with. Um, now with the restringing, the scaling for the top was revised a little bit, just because there was some slightly unusual uh, scaling uh, gauges used at certain points. And um, interestingly with the bass, this piano has I think the better part of 18 or 19 single bass strings, um, which was quite a challenge in terms of uh, adjusting the mechanism in the end. As you can see, there's quite an aggressive overstrung angle with the uh, bass strings, but also we needed to buy an additional pack of dampers uh, because most pianos will have 10, maybe 11, 12 uh, singles. Whereas with this literally having double that amount, uh, we had to buy two packets of damper felts. Uh, the other thing we've done is, and I'll show you a picture in a second, but the original capstans were those older style rocker capstans, and they have been replaced with a set of WNG capstans. Now what we've had to do, and you'll see there's a little bit of glue squeeze there, is attach a felt button to the top of each one, uh, just because uh, with the assembly, uh, the whipping heels on this instrument were timber, so we had to felt something, and this was just the easier option. Um, all of the keys have been rebushed. Uh, you can see here that some of these we've had to uh, basically remortise or attempt to uh, use a router to extend the width of the hole because they are much, much smaller. Uh, all the keys have been rebushed, giving the ivories a, a quick clean. Uh, so restringing on top. Now we'll give you a quick look at the action mechanism and we'll show you the work that's been done. Right, so looking at the action back in the piano, um, you can see that there's a lot of new components. So first off, we have uh, the Arbel hammer assembly. Uh, this was supplied and fitted by Brooks in Connecticut. And um, it's an interesting scale and assembly in that a certain point, I think it's about hammer number or about 76, 77, um, the standard tails begin to be shaped and that's, I'm not sure if that's a mass thing or if it's just in terms of uh, aligning and allowing for shaping, but we've kept that original and obviously as we progress down the hammers increase. 
unit size, we have um, the base hammers that we've had to do a lot of shaping with. And the reason for that is that the base stringing angle here is quite aggressive. And with the number of singles, there's not a huge amount of space in terms of alignment. So we've had to remove an excess amount of the shaping of the hammers at the sides to allow for travel and the hammers to actually reach the strings appropriately. Um, with the stringing as discussed, we've only got a very small number of bicords, and uh, that progresses to, I think, 19 singles. Uh, so we had to buy two packs of damper uh, felts to compensate for the additional strings. It's quite an unusual scale like that. Um, the space strings were supplied by Stephen Powell in Wellington, and he has rescaled that. Um, there were some limitations in regards to the uh, upper singles, just because obviously not having a combination of two strings there limits the efficacy of uh, a nice sort of balance between the bicords and the singles. But there's actually a very nice transition. <laughs> actually really nice. As you can see we've done a little bit of respraying here just to sort of balance in the in transition from the original. We would have completely refinished the plate however we would have lost all of this wonderful marking. As you can see there's some quite ornate little figures there and also coming down to the side here we've got a nice, not entirely sure who that is, Britannia or Justice or someone like that. Um, the piano has been fitted with a new damper assembly, so we have Takiwa damper levers and we also have Takiwa damper felts, uh, mostly block there. We've got three split wedge and then the remainder base. And uh, now that we've had a quick look at that, let's have a quick play and see what it sounds like. 